Hello? Yeah, yeah. yes, yes. Ah, uh, yes, sir. Doctors, we are live. You can start the session. Thank you. So good evening, everyone, and welcome to this uh, TNOA Thursday. It's indeed a special September, and I'm happy to welcome you all to this evening program. And uh, this September, we started with uh, eye donation webinar, thanks to Dr. Sharmila and the team. And then we had a, a wonderful in-person live wire infection control program. Uh, Dr. Chandra Shegar and the Paimathur Ophthalmic Society, along with the uh, Quality and in Infection Control Committee of TNVA, did a wonderful job. So we had over 170 registrations, and uh, the deliberation went on till 4:30 in the evening. And many hospitals participated and benefited from that event. And apart from that, uh, I would also request all of you to uh, give your inputs in the Google form. Uh, so we have sent few initiatives uh, and Google form to get your inputs. So one of them is TNOA Insurance Committee's uh, initiative. We wanted your opinion and inputs on uh, the present status of uh, the challenges with insurance. And also uh, another Google form shared by the TNOA Wellness Committee that has uh, been shared uh, through our TNOA email and uh, the WhatsApp group. So Dr. Arvind and uh, Dr. Ravi Kumar, our TNOA Wellness Committee uh, team is taking uh, earnest interest in bringing people together towards this wellness concept. So <clears throat> this edition of TNOA uh, Young Ophthalmologist uh, program. So the first program was uh, wonderful. So we had uh, over 783 uh, <clears throat> Uh, viewers, I think it would have uh, increased by this time. So that's a wonderful response to this uh, mm -hmm. the first edition of TNOAO Innovation Program. We had the uh, MCC MRF Innovation Center head and principal uh, joining us for this event and uh, explaining about the way forward for the innovators in the social aspect, as well as how to take the innovation forward to reach out to its uh, full potential and with that uh, uh, wonderful response and good feedback on the first edition our TNOA Young Ophthalmologist uh, Task Force headed by Nishant and uh, Prasanna have uh, put forward this session and this is, sounds promising and we have uh, Dr. Suvin, who is uh, a master innovator and gone through the whole circle of innovation and uh, <clears throat> bring out his own company and product, which helped a lot in all our uh, journey of making cataract uh, uh, easy one, particularly the uh, challenging cataract like uh, uh, small pupil cataracts. So that's been a wonderful innovation from Suvin. So, he would be, uh, he has already joined us for this uh, session. And we also have Dr. Parikumar, our own uh, Tamil Nadu innovator, who has uh, over nine patents across the various countries. Uh, I had an opportunity to look into his uh, innovation and his uh, efforts towards uh, patent registration. I think I'm sure uh, these two experts will guide our youngsters uh, towards innovation and how to take that forward to the larger global arena as well as how it can benefit our state ophthalmologist. So I wholeheartedly support and look forward to active participation of all our uh, leaders. So I welcome our leaders, our uh, uh, immediate past president, Dr. Ramakrishnan, our uh, pres uh, past president and advisor, Dr. Tangavelu, our secretary, Dr. Sriram, joint secretary, Dr. Sharmila, and uh, all our MC members, as well as the uh, moderators here, again, Nishant and Prasanna. And then uh, we have a, exist, uh, a good list of panelists, innovators themselves, young and active dynamic ophthalmologist, Dr. Amar, Dr. Devi Priya, Dr. Atishwar, Dr. Jan Davis, he's always there in all innovation programs, Dr. Nilesh and Dr. Amil Kumar, and of course, our office bearers, and not to forget our TNOA members with interest in the Young Ophthalmologist Program and uh, Innovation. And I look forward to an exciting evening. And uh, we, also, 
we are planning to give this platform to our youngsters and uh, there have been um, a good response from the trade as well apart from uh, our today's sponsor ocular is mankind uh, who was uh, planning uh, who was promised to help us in the next few meetings as well as there are good response from the other train members they are looking for some good innovation where they can absorb as well as uh, take our help to uh, bring new things to our uh, patients as well as practitioners and there's also one uh, feedback from the industry that if there are uh, anything they can do to help our innovators so they are willing to join TNOA and uh, take the initiative forward so that's a wonderful response to the first program and uh, this invite I have shared with uh, most of the industry partners so they are also joining us in the YouTube I look forward to a wonderful session so thank you so much I uh, invite Dr. R.K. sir to share a few words and then uh, if our leaders have joined, they can share their views and then we move on to the program. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Uh, Nirmal, uh, dear President, uh, Dr. Nirmal, and uh, my dear friend, past President Sangavelu, and uh, Sirram Gobal Sakriti, and uh, other Abhis Bairas of TNOA, and uh, uh, dear friends, and also the uh, keynote speaker of the day, as uh, Nirval mentioned, Dr. Swan Patajaji. I have seen his uh, talk, listened to his talks and some of the innovations. Really, definitely, it is uh, very, uh, I'm very much uh, amazed to see his uh, work in uh, the field of innovation. And also, Parikumar, of course, I'm eagerly waiting to listen to his uh, innovation. I don't know much about the uh, work by the Parikumar. And uh, also the um, um, my dear uh, uh, chairpersons and uh, uh, the panelists and uh, of course the dear uh, young innovator speakers. Uh, good evening to all. Uh, really, it's a very uh, amazing to see uh, such a novel, innovative ideas from our own uh, young ophthalmologists. And uh, last week, as Dermal uh, mentioned, we had a wonderful uh, presentation by all the uh, uh, speakers, in continue, continuation of that, uh, you know, the, today we have about uh, seven speakers uh, giving their uh, ideas and uh, definitely it will somehow help us to improve our uh, clinical practice so that we can give a good care to our patients. And also happy to know that they are, uh, from Nirmal that some of the uh, companies are willing to support for this type of work. Definitely, it's a very well welcome uh, note from the companies. Really, very happy, and uh, of course, I wish all the speakers uh, your very best and and uh, uh, their future. And also, it's nice to see all the young speakers, uh, even the Prasanna and his and uh, all these. All are young. We are. Uh, I really am very uh, happy. Yeah, thank, thank you very much, Nirmal. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, sir. And two of them from your family, sir. They <laughs> bear your surname. And uh, right. thank, thank you, sir. And uh, thank you, you. you Shriram. Uh, if this program is uh, live today, that's uh, thanks to the great efforts of uh, this Trichy duo, Dr. Shriram and uh, Dr. Prasanna. Shriram. Sir, it's all Prasanna's efforts, sir. I just helped him whenever he wanted help. That's all I did. Mm -hmm. I, was, I was asking 24-7, <laughs> <laughs> That's let's, okay. Okay, let's uh, uh, move on. Uh, over to you, Dr. Nishant and Dr. Prasanna. We are eagerly waiting to hear from all the speakers as well as the two experts uh, with us. Yes, a warm good evening. Thanks to our president, sir, and all the past presidents. Uh, so we will be kick-starting the second session of our innovator speaker. And now I request uh, Prasanna to introduce our first speaker and we'll have a great kickstart. Uh, yes, sir. I'll, I, we are just calling for the first speaker, Dr. Shruti Nishant, ma'am. Just a moment. Uh, yes. Yes, ma'am. We are just sharing before you start this term. Yes. Okay, keynote speaker to first or later. 
uh, illa sir uh, four innovative speakers are speaking then in between sir oh okay okay, okay. Well, that's fine and then fine. three good good yeah very in good. between sir Uh, so before we start, can we have a few words from Pari sir, our uh, chairperson, as we get the CV of Shruti ma'am ready? Yeah. Good evening, everyone. Uh, good evening, the president sir, uh, Dr. Ramakrishnan sir, and all the senior members and uh, my dear friends. Uh, it's a wonderful pleasure. Um, you know, innovation is something uh, that's hot in the world. Uh, so ophthalmology. is a leader in innovation in the world uh, we are the ones who uh, initiated the concept of implantation in the world so it it's you know a uh, bit late that we have started uh, doing all the innovative work uh, but then it's not uh, too late uh, i would say uh, now i'm very happy that so many new innovations are coming up uh, in tamil nadu and uh, i'm very happy that everything every innovation must uh, reach its uh, right place uh, it, it should not be you know left half way through and um, so i am expecting great things great presentations i'll come back with comments later thank you pari sir uh, thank you president uh, and all office bearers uh, so we'll have the first speaker uh, dr shruti nishan Uh, Ma'am is a consultant pediatric ophthalmologist at MNI Hospital, and she is a myopic uh, specialist. She has presented uh, various uh, innovations as well as the sunlight tracker innovation in RO twenty twenty two, which won the travel grant, and she has won the Nadraja Pillai Best Paper Award at Shankaran Ethralaya, and also the Best Paper Award in TNOA and AOS in the year twenty twenty two. So she is also now collaborating for a PhD in Netherlands to study the sunlight exposure pattern. was this uh, in temperate versus tropical regions over to you ma'am to share your innovation for the next four minutes uh so uh, thank you so much dr prasanna and thank you to the yo task force and to tnoa and to the president for such a vibrant meeting and for giving platform to us to present our work and in front of such an esteemed panel like dr parikumar whom we know thank you and so i'll be presenting my <clears throat> work on light and myopia now we all know that um, light and myopia are best friends so there's a, they share a very precious relationship together and uh, uh, we do know that sunlight has definitely a protective role in myopia however we still have a lot of unanswered questions in myopia and sunlight how much is enough what spectral composition is enough what time of the day what angulation of light is there a role for the physical activity as well and is there a role for accommodation now all these questions still remain unanswered and we still don't know so to explore this further we had an innovation called the lumino sundial and this is a patented device now it's a fairly small and a fuss free device which can be put on the hands of a wrist of a child it has a ambient light sensor in the front it has a heart rate sensor at the back and toggles on the side now this uh, gives the depiction of all the activities or the out outdoor activities of the child now what is the data that we can harvest from this device we can measure the illuminance levels uv exposure and infrared exposure through the ambient light sensor it also has an accelerometer to measure the physical activity and a heart rate monitor to measure the pulse rate and it also has a, a temperature measurement putting all of this together and to create thresholds we arrive at the final outdoor time spent by the child now all of this information can be directly synchronized through a mobile phone application to the parent using the lumino band app and to the admin using the admin app now what does the parent app see you can see this beautiful interface wherein you can see the steps taken by the child the sun exposure the heart rate and you can also set goals for your child you can see how beautifully the uh, the <clears throat> the graphical representation of a 24 hour exposure of sunlight for a child on a certain date and you can show it across different dates as well you can also measure the steps taken by the child and the parent also has Uh, uh, an option to set the number of steps or the set the number of hours of uv exposure the child should be taking during the day now how exactly does it work as i mentioned it's through an ambient light sensor which stores the data on the device one reading is taken every 5 seconds so over a minute 12 readings are taken averaged 
and stored as one reading. So per minute, one reading is stored. So over one hour, 60 readings are stored. So this is how the device works. The device has a capacity to store data for one month, after which it can be synchronized to the application. Now we validated this device using a standard luxometer. We placed them in sunlight and then measured over 500 readings. And we found a reliability of 0 0.786, which is fairly good. We also went ahead and put it in different light settings like outdoor direct sunlight, outdoor shade, indoor natural illumination near a window, and indoor artificial light. And as you can see across the spectrum, you get these beautiful graphs, which show how the variation of the lux were. This is an ultraviolet uh, measurement here, you can see. And you see that we noticed that ultraviolet is a much better predictor of outdoor time versus the lux. So you can see the outdoor direct sunlight has much higher value as compared to the indoor artificial light. So one thing we realized when it comes to lux is that arbitrarily outdoors is taken as more than 1000 lux and indoors is taken as less than 1000 lux. But in our observations, we found that sometimes in outdoor shade, it was less than 1000 lux and sometimes in indoor natural illumination it was more than 1000 lux so to have a better predictor of what is outdoors and indoors we put all of the data that we collected into machine learning and split them into 70% uh, uh, training and 30% testing and what we found out using artificial intelligence was that this machine had an accuracy of 67 percentage and we also did a wearability and a compliance study and found a good compliance and excellent feedback and the 10 children that whom we gave to had a a good measurement of the outdoor time span by them. So the learnings from this device is that yes, it worked for us and that was a big success. We have adjusted the thresholds to UV more than seven and Lux more than 800. And we found out that UV is a much better predictor of outdoors. We realized that AI-based recognition of outdoor and indoor plays an important role. And another interesting observation we found was sitting near a window is as good as sitting in near outdoor shade. We also found that cumulative sun exposure is definitely more valuable. Of course, the challenges we faced are the variability. So we have, schools don't allow watches. So we have now made an adaptation for the ID card. We found a compliance could be a small issue. We couldn't measure at the eye level. So that's another thing we are facing. Study of accommodation cannot be done using this device. And we are trying to look at long-term study of myopia progression over six months. And as we speak, if the study is going on. And we are also trying to look at the pattern of sunlight in different climate zones. So to conclude, this is a reliable measurement of sunlight exposure. It's a pivotal research tool. It can help the clinician do customized myopia control. And for a parent, is a very, very valuable tool to provide feedback. And this can be produced mass scale and sold to many children and parents as well. So this is a picture of me when I was a child. This is a picture of my children today. And I think somewhere along the way, we need to bridge the gap and make sunlight our home. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Thank you, uh, Shruti ma'am, for this wonderful innovation. I've seen it travel through phases and to see how much it has grown, it leaps and bones. Uh, Swin sir and Pari sir, over to you for uh, the comments on uh, Madam's wonderful innovation. Uh, yeah, thanks, uh, Prasanna. So, uh, uh, I mean, it's a wonderful paper. I think definitely it's it's good to have a metric where we can measure uh, uh, a good work actually at NAP and then again trying to customize it where because uh, of technical difficulties that the uh, watches will not be allowed and fitting it into the ID card. I think that was, that's a brilliant move. Uh, just a light, lighthearted comment. In our times when we grew up, uh, there were no apps and there were no, uh, there were simple uh, metrics. You could tell from our face how long we've been outside. We'd be sunburnt like hell. <laughs> and uh, sometimes even our neighbors knew how, how long we've been outside when we come back and get the yelling. Uh, so anyway, times have changed. It's difficult to keep kids outside the house now. In our times, it was quite the other way around. Thanks. Lovely, lovely work. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Yeah. Great it's work. Nice, nice yeah. way of... Uh sending people outside you give the same uh, type of uh, phone and send it send them outside i think uh, we should also give this to the parents first because this generation of parents doesn't go out so that actually they teach the uh, children also to stay indoor so maybe you can uh, devise one more for the parents uh, yes, agree, sir, Nirmal, sir. agree i'm yes, sorry sir, when we... because uh, i often all of us must be having this issue with the parents complaining that the kids don't go outside. I asked them, what alternatives have you given them? They have no, not offered their kids any alternatives. So with, for, just for lack of a better alternative, they stick at home. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's true, sir. Uh, so the initial use case which we had uh, devised it was for children, but then we did realize as we go on, a lot of parents, in fact, they were interested to try on the device. And now we have actually given it to two adults also who are really interested to know their sunlight exposure. And uh, we've uh, found the use case in people who are recovering from trauma, who need to have better bone strength, and for postmenopausal women as well, who need the calcium and the vitamin D in their bodies. So I think these are two use cases which we are now exploring for adults. Thank you for the suggestion. One of the device by Google Fit had this, the amount of sunlight exposure and uh, so that uh, uh, fit watch for the adults. And uh, I think they've also done a lot of studies related to the exposure of sunlight in uh, the athletes and uh, the people who work uh, outdoor or indoor. So there was a study comparing indoor uh, work in gyms and outdoor work. Uh, so that was a different lifestyle study. I think they captured that if they are uh, working outdoor for at least one hour a day, that is seven to eight hours uh, cumulative outdoor, that gives much better bone strength and uh, absorption than indoor work. Yes, sir. That's interesting, oh. sir. So to me, if I can add, sir, uh, Dr. Shruti, wonderful presentation. Uh, sir was talking about the Google Fitbit watch and uh, I just wanted to highlight when you have the sunlight exposure, you should also include there's an option there which says with sunscreen or without sunscreen. So I don't know how what is the impact is going to be when you sit, send your kids out with the sunscreen, whether the amount of sunlight exposure when you have these new sunscreen, which is SPF 50 and above, definitely the impact is going to be far lesser. So probably that's another area you can look into. Uh, without yes. sunscreen, you have to send the kids out for optimal sunlight exposure. Uh, yes, sir, that's interesting. Uh, actually, having once now that you've brought it up, we, we are still confused whether it's the sunlight on the skin or sunlight that's in, falling on the eye. So really, there's not much of evidence there as well. So it would be interesting to see that aspect of with sunscreen, without sunscreen, to see whether the skin plays a role in this or whether it's the light that's directly falling on the eye. Yes. Thank, you, Thank you for that idea. Yeah. Yes. I think uh, Nirmal sir is planning the FFA with uh, PM Arvind. And I think in that group, we can have a lot of control studies yeah yeah definitely that's why i said we have a platform getting ready for this may I comment yeah uh, dr Suthi, it was just a wonderful presentation uh, maybe your topic is uh, exploring myopia instead of that i think probably uh, you can uh, you can change the topic exploring the overall health in relation to sunlight exposure so I think that should be the thing. And uh, it, the, the effect of myopia is probably part of it. So reaching out to adults and reaching out to the software professionals, uh, I think you have a very big market. Very big yes, market sir. you have. Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, Wonderful sir. work. Thank Congrats. You. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. So now in, uh, moving to our next speaker is Dr. Ayman. So he is a consultant of cataract and glaucoma service in the Eye Foundation Coimbatore. He is also the winner of national biomedical research competition conducted by the Society of Young Biomedical Scientists in 2021. Yes, Dr. Ayman, we are looking forward to your talk. Thank you, Dr. Nishan. Uh, um, yeah, at the outset, I would like to thank uh, the organizers and the TNOA and all the seniors to for organizing such a wonderful webinar with such esteemed uh, you know uh, uh, staff and uh, uh, such uh, innovators so um, i would like to just uh, talk a little bit uh, about my uh, device it's a small uh, device called uh, smartphone coated uh, cobalt blue uh, photography do it yourself uh, it's actually uh, it's short for scooby doo uh, i know it's uh, quite a long name but uh, i just wanted to use something that's catchy so i uh, i went along with this so i have a small video to share if i could just uh, uh, show the video and then we can discuss yeah you can start sharing if anyone will let me know if the video and the audio is clear on the other side i'd be really grateful Can you play it? Patients in the ICU. Is it heard? Yeah, yeah, audio is heard. Yes, yes, high risk of ocular surface disorders due to metabolic derangements, mechanical ventilation, and decreased level of consciousness, and are often unable to convey their ophthalmological complaints. 
as icu staff are primarily concerned with stabilization of vital bodily functions they may lack awareness of the risk of ocular surface disorders and fail to perform regular ocular screenings which may lead to visual threatening complications what if we had a do it yourself pocket friendly device that could easily be used to screen and treat such patients We present to you smartphone co-aided cobalt blue photography do it yourself or scooby do an innovative do it yourself tool which can be used to carry out blue light photography of fluorescent stained corneas without the aid of a slit lamp This device requires simple easily accessible material such as chart paper double sided tape intraocular lens acrylic blue filter sheet hole puncher a scalpel and a ruler To assemble, one centimeter into eight centimeter strip of black chart paper is cut, and five marks at one centimeter apart are placed. Double-sided tape is placed from the three centimeter to five centimeter section of the chart paper. Distance from the center of your phone camera and flat light are measured. and the distance is marked on chart paper between the 4 cm and the 5 cm section the chart paper is folded over at a red dotted line and two punch holes are made on the marked area as shown in the figures the cover of the double sided tape is removed and the iol of the appropriate power is placed on the 4 cm mark punch hole and the chart paper is folded over The acrylic piece is placed over the punch hole. Device is aligned over the camera, cell phone, and kept in place with micro port. By placing the acrylic blue filter over the smartphone camera flash, blue light in the range of 450 to 490 nanometer passes, while the other wavelengths are filtered out. We were able to capture high quality images of multiple conditions such as diffuse punctate epithelial erosions due to dry eye, inferior punctate epithelial erosions due to late pathology, bulbar conjunctiva staining due to Steven Johnson syndrome, large epithelial defect, an epithelial component of graft rejection, dendritic viral keratitis, filamentary keratitis, a total epithelial defect seen in postoperative day 1 of a total penetrating keratoplasty. We were even able to capture a high-definition video demonstrating Seidel's positive test in the case of a penetrating trauma. This device was also useful in teleophthalmology for diagnosis, photo documentation, and treatment counseling of patients. For your consideration, the best friend in screening ocular surface disorders in a setup where slit lamp is not available, Scooby Doo. A do-it-yourself pocket-friendly tool to keep avoidable vision-threatening conditions at bay. Yeah, so uh, this is just uh, this is how the device looks like. It's a small uh, kind of chart paper with uh, an acrylic sheet and an IOL, which you place on the camera. And uh, as shown in the video, it just uh, you know captures quite good uh, high-quality images and videos of fluorescent uh, stained, stained corneas, cornic pathologies. Thank you. Yes, sir, John, sir. That that's an excellent innovation, excellent frugal innovation, which can be used by almost everybody. So congratulations on that. So this Thanks. is uh, th th so we, if you look at the kind of places where we need to use this, this is exactly the thing which can be used. We cannot use a slit lamp. The the cobalt blue illumination of a direct ophthalmoscope is absolutely useless for this and uh, you cannot take an indirect ophthalmoscope for bedside to the icu so this is going to be very useful you have very powerful flashlights on the smartphones you can just put this and capture beautiful images and even videos as you have shown so excellent congratulations thank you thank you dr john uh dr ayman it was uh, ayman khan it is a wonderful innovation um it's not only for icu patients uh, even for pediatric patients in opd uh, those who do not cooperate you know i think yeah. uh, it will be useful for them also yeah definitely sir yeah. 
have you taken tear breakup time using this dr aiman yes sir it's an ongoing study we are doing actually uh, it's quite uh, useful uh, because we get an objective kind of assessment of tear film breakup time you can just go back to the video and exactly measure the number of seconds as opposed to doing it on a slit lamp which is can be subjective between uh, one person and the other so uh, that's another study that we're going to and another thing we have also tried it is on contact lens fitting as well uh I, for now i've just used it for as a teasing tool it's very useful to show the student uh, uh, you know the video and kind of describe it uh, side by side you know as opposed to like doing it on a patient where we have to go uh, one after the other and look at the patient and teach them so that's another thing which we are using for so uh, it's a quite a useful device uh, uh, you know excellent hi dr amar congratulations uh, i just wanted to know what is the power of the lens you are using yeah so the power of the lens which i use Yeah, the I will. I power. Of, I use this twenty adapters. Okay. So the it has a good magnification, but uh, the field of the image is slightly lesser. Yeah. So if uh, I would suggest maybe something between fifteen to eighteen adapters, which will give us a higher field of vision, and even the depth of focus is a little bit longer. The one I'm using, the depth of focus is quite short, so it gets out of focus very easily. So it has to be very stable. So maybe fifteen to eighteen adapters, I would recommend, and that would give us a nice uh, wide image with the good depth of focus. Okay. Thank you. thank you sir one small issue uh, when you have multiple cameras how do you force one specific camera Can, are you able to do that so i didn't get you uh, when you have a multiple camera phone sometimes yeah. you will not be able to force a camera to choose that camera so how do you force the camera to select that particular camera so each each phone definitely has one primary camera right so you can just uh, look at that by opening up your uh, back side camera and then like choosing putting your finger on it and you'll come to one which is the primary camera and then you have to measure the distance between that and the flash plate and then based on that you make your decision yeah i just want to add one point here dr john uh, the thing is like uh, routinely our phones have 0.5 one or two like one is ultra wide and uh, the one x is nothing but the wide and two is telescopic so uh, whatever the lens you are going to put that most commonly because i use my macro lens for smartphone photography again the macro lens and the iol power is somewhere around 15 to 20 adapter so it works basically on the whatever the, like if you open the camera it often opens on default 1x so whatever the lens you are going to use that opens uh, that works on a wide angle that doesn't work on telescopic telescopic becomes it becomes more zooming thing so it's not going to work it's not going to i mean align the optical quality will never become auto focused so again 0.5 it is ultra wide so your lens becomes very small so most commonly it works with 1x magnification thank you thank you thank you sir and the panel for wonderful uh, insightful discussion thank so you so next we move to uh, dr kartikeyan mahalingam uh, our own from uh, tamil nadu who is currently in aims new delhi so kartik uh, has published more than 62 research papers with a citation score of 122 and an h index of 6 with i10 index of 4 and he is currently also the executive member in uc he has won several awards being the best paper of session glaucoma at aos 2021 the shri janardan prasad glaucoma award the first prize in glaucoma interesting cases in dos and many other dos awards as you can see he is also a good quizzer he is one third prize in the mega quiz and also active in toscon where he had the third prize in ignite talks So, Karthik, your CV precedes yourself. Over to your novel invention in uh, glaucoma. You're on mute, uh, Doctor Karthik. Okay. First, I thank uh, the TNOA and the organizing committee for giving me this chance. First, I'm going to talk about a new tool, a novel method for measuring corneal diameter in infants screened for congenital glaucoma. as we know corneal diameter is important indicator for both diagnosis and measuring the progression of disease in congenital glaucoma it is usually measured using castrovisual caliper but it needs examination and anesthesia or sedation we devised a simple u shaped tool using three swimmer strip or a printable ruler to measure corneal diameter in settings where ophthalmic caliper is not available or u is not feasible um we did a study before ua corneal diameters were measured using um u tool and during ua it was measured using castrovisual caliper and both were compared in a cooperative child u tool was just placed above the orbital rim if not cooperative 
when the child was asleep the eyelids were gently retracted by the attendant and new tool was placed then we took photo using a smartphone and care must be taken to keep the smartphone you tool parallel to the orbital rim of the patient uh, as you see here it should be parallel to each other so that there is no parallax error after taking photo using image editing software a rectangle frame was drawn and the uh, uh, reading is calculated this reading okay after making rectangle frame we can measure the number of line and we'll get the first reading here you can see the how the util reading is calculated in the multiple patients as we do not place the util directly on the corneal limbus to measure the corneal limb, uh, diameter a correction factor must be added to cause uh, to correct for the minification caused to the uh, distance the correction factor was found to be 1.15 meter uh the mean age of infants screen in our study was around 6.7 months most of the patients had primary congenital glaucoma and the corneal diameter measured using the castro vitro caliper and the u tool are almost similar if we don't apply the correction factor the u tool reading was around uh, 1.5 mm lesser than the uh, corneal diameter measured by castro vitro caliper the bland almond 95% limit of agreement showed the uh, uh, narrow limits in which, uh, between the u tool and the castro vitro caliper there was a uh, very good correlation between the corneal diameter measured using castro vitro caliper and u tool the limitation of the study would be measurement error could occur if we don't place the u tool or the phone parallel to each the parallel to the eye while taking photographs uh, um, parallax error can occur sedatives or anesthesia might be required in a non cooperative child in our study 18% of the um, patient need either sedatives or it was examined during eua stretch limbs in congenital glaucoma could also pose variation measurement of corneal diameter by different observers to conclude this novel innovation provides a no touch technique of measuring corneal diameter considering a difference of plus or minus 0.5 within the acceptable range most of the uh, readings taken by you tool were in the acceptable range compared to the castro vitro caliper it provides a corneal diameter measurements in awake or sleeping state without the use of sedatives in anesthesia or anesthesia in majority of the cases Hence, it can be used for screening pediatric glaucoma by first contact physicians in the primary health center or or any pediatrician, or by the optometrist or by the ophthalmologist, especially when the EUA is delayed. Thank you. Thank you for this uh, wonderful innovation topic. I just have a quick doubt. Uh, was this inspired from the exophthalmometer? I think uh, did you have that inspiration from it? So, what was the inspiration for this? Uh, and thing is uh, we had similar strips in the when the patient is admitted in ward um uh, we'll say uh, adult patient will keep, keep the patient in the sit lamp and you, you, you will measure it for kids we were trying what will they have in the ward we had similar strips we tried to measure first we measured there was multiple parallax error then we used two similar strips then we used the third strip to combine this both then and how will we measure uh, the uh, corneal diameter then we drew a rectangle box by and, and, and just one more quick doubt uh, karthik so you are telling that it's a no touch technique right so what is the uh, idea that you propose at which level should it be because it's a child right so if it is slightly in front or slightly if it is going backwards i think the correction factor may vary yeah right? so you have to just your, keep, uh, you have to, uh, yeah it can happen so for to avoid it we have to just keep over the orbital rim as shown in image not very far or not very close just above it just above the orbital rim uh, yes sir suvin so, sir your uh, comment uh, dr kartik uh, wonderful uh, work i just have a little uh, clarification because if you keep it at the orbital rim it's away from the plane of the cornea and yes, that sir. will definitely give you a parallax error 
uh, I'm not sure whether you're going to uh, use a reduction factor or something, because if you just take a scale, a transparent scale, and place it on a box, and you try to take a take in picture with a smartphone, you'll see there's a huge parallax error. Even, even, when the scale, even when the scale is flush on the box. So the size measurement, as you would do uh, in real uh, life, and uh, even when on a, an image, is very different. Uh, could you explain that? Ah, yes, sir. As uh, This is the slide explaining, sir. As we direct, do not um, place it on the limbus, then we have to apply a correction factor for the minification cost to the distance. The distance between the uh, limbus and the, uh, what is it called? Uh, the U tool was measured up for approximately 16 millimeter. We measured in multi. And the correction factor for 16 millimeter was detected to be approximately 1.15. But that so will be different we, in every, every child, isn't it? With every patient, yeah. depending on. If we just keep about the orbital rim, it is around 15 to 17 millimeter. We took an average of 16 millimeter. To the corneal plane, the limbal plane will be yeah. very different from yeah, child to child. 16 millimeters is an average that you've taken, yeah, yeah. which would not probably work in others. And here, if you're going to keep it uh, critical, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just being the devil's advocate over here. Uh, yes, sir. There can be a little bit of difference. But in our study, uh, it, the measurement with the Castro caliper gave a good agreement. Okay. Okay. Thank you, sir. Dr. Karthik, actually, how do you stabilize your hand while taking this image? Stabilize the hand? To avoid the parallax error. How do you, do you have a, uh -huh. like, what level do you keep and take and anything like that? No, just, ma'am, we just keep it. Uh, yeah, we just keep it near the orbital rim, ma'am. Uh, okay. Uh, if you want to stabilize your hand, we can keep our fingers over the forehead of the child or anything. Okay, no, I'm asking the one with the distance between the oh, camera and this thing. Does it matter? And this, that doesn't matter. Man. Distance between the uh, U tool and the eye matters. Camera. Okay. I, there is no, uh, wherever we keep the camera, it doesn't matter. Okay. Dr. Karth again. So this U tool, it is, uh, it is actually a universal tool now. So you can use it for measuring anything. Uh, if you actually have good enough accuracy, you can measure even size of corneal ulcers, you can measure oh, pupil right. size, you can measure uh, IPD, so many things. So you tool, I think you can name it as a universal uh, ruler, universal scale for all these things. I, I have actually done a similar thing using another app, uh, image uh, meter app. So in that, if you have any reference measurement, you need not have an actual scale. If you have any reference measurement kept in the correct plane, you can take a photograph and from the photograph, you can uh, use the image meter app to mark the reference measurement. And then you can measure lengths, you can measure areas and you can measure angles and so on. So you can probably look at that image meter app that is going to be very useful along with uh, something like this. Okay. I presented in TNOA uh, uh, Pondicherry 2019, I think. Okay. You can use, look it up. It's very useful. Thank you, sir. Uh, actually, my friend, uh, Dr. Rahul Bapna also gave a suggestion. He, he started using in corneal ulcers. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Then, I used in corneal ulcers. Uh, he started in corneal ulcers. Then we started using in congenital glaucoma. So, Thank uh, you, Dr. Karthian, uh, hi. Uh, a very nice innovation, and uh, I just have one suggestion that uh, uh, building on what Suvendra was uh, telling, the parallax error. What you can do is you can uh, paste a lute's uh, exophthalmometer on one side, so that you you can know the exact distance when you are measuring uh, when you are taking the photograph. You can see what what is the distance from the corneal uh, apex or the limbus to the uh, placement where you are placing the you uh, your U tool. And then you can have a nomogram kind of thing, so that uh, that that can be taken care of, if you want to want to be too precise. And if you don't have an exophthalmometer, you can make a 3D U tool where one of the yeah. arms goes backwards, but, so that yeah. you can measure the uh, distance from the orbital margin and the yeah. corneal plane. Thank you, sir, for the suggestion. Thank you. Thank you. That's that's the best thing, Karthikeyan. You start with one, and with so much of innovators and expert opinion. It can be used for more other purposes as well. Mm -hmm. Next, we have Dr. Vigneshwar, who did his post-graduation from Aravindra Hospital, Madurai. Now he is heading the branch of Dindukal, performed over 12,000 cataract surgeries. And he's also worked with hospital in Kenya. 
So he got the Innovator Award at TNOA and at Hackathon 2023. And he's also passionate about providing good patient care and training doctors in surgery. Over to you, Dr. Vigneshwar, for the tall lamp. Thank you, sir. Uh, I would like to thank TNOA for giving me this opportunity. And uh, before I just start my video presentation, uh, I'd just like to add this was mainly developed for the well-being of ophthalmologists. So I'll just give a comment at the last uh, after the video. Sorry. You can share your screen. Yeah, just that. I think, uh, I think I'm having a problem with that. I'll just uh, uh, come back we, for the next. Yes, is Vivek sir ready? Uh, the next speaker. Can we have uh, Vivek sir next? Vivek uh, sir, are you ready, sir? Uh, yes, sir. Just a moment, sir. Before uh, we call you, I'll just share the screen. Just a moment. You can just get your presentation ready, sir. Uh, meanwhile, so yes, we'll yes. have uh, the senior first, followed by the junior next. Sir. <laughs> okay. Um, it had to happen this way. So let us do it that way, sir. So you want me to do it now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. As uh, Vignesh is having technical glitches, so we'll oh. have yours now, sir. Yeah. Sure. So as Vignesh is getting ready, uh, we'll have uh, Vivekanandan sir's presentation now. So uh, Dr. V.R. Vivekanandan, sir, uh, has been 15 years in Arvind. He's an MS ophthalmologist and invited speaker in various forums, AAO, ASCRS, and he has also trained many residents from USA, African countries, and Southern East, Southern East Asian countries. And he has worked in Cambodia, Bangladesh, Ethiopia, to name a few. And he has won the coveted ACRS award uh, not once but three times. And uh, he's also won the award at IRSA. He's won the Innovator Award of TNOA, and he has swept all the Innovative Award sessions. And he's now heading the Sitapur Eye Hospital, which is managed by Arvind. So uh, over to you, uh, Vivekanandan, sir, for the next few minutes. Thank you, Prasanna. Yes, sir. Uh, can you see my screen? Yeah, visible. Yes. Yes, okay. Um, so, uh, good, good evening, everybody. I would like to thank TNOA for giving me this opportunity. So, I'll be uh, sharing a few innovations uh, by me. So, uh, right now, I'll show the uh, um, iridodialysis repair and uh, a flanged uh, SFIL technique, both using proline suture. It's a simplified technique uh, which can be done by everybody. So, ideally, the challenge right now is uh, most of the techniques are cumbersome. You need to make a peritomy, you need to do Hoffman's pockets, you need to do multiple sclerotomies, you need special instruments, special theater setup, sometimes even specialist surgeries. And uh, eventually, you know, all these things leading to a longer learning curve. And uh, it becomes difficult for all of the, uh, you know, most of them to perform. Very few can perform. So uh, the idea is to make surgery simple. And uh, it was, it did not happen uh, over a day, you know, it just evolved. And right now, I think uh, we have something uh, as a final uh, technique. So I'll start with my first uh, innovative technique on iridodialysis repair. So this uh, iridodialysis uh, case with around four clock hours of uh, iridodialysis uh, due to some trauma. So first, after staining and making the incisions, I use an iris hook to... Uh, Anchor the iris because I do not want that to get caught in my FECO probe. FECO emulsification is done. The iris hook is removed. And the normal HPMC is replaced with a dispersive and cohesive viscoelastic combination because HPMC tends to roll the iris. So we need something heavier which will keep the iris flat. So wash off all the HPMC and then inject. Uh, I prefer to use viscoat, so which flattens the iris and it stays. So I identify the uh, points where I have to do the uh, fixation. So I move the conjunctiva radially, and uh, this is a needle that I designed, which is a 150 micron spatulated needle attached to a proline suture at the level of iris plane. So this varies. We cannot uh, have the measurement as 1.5 or 2 millimeters uh, away from the limbus. So depending upon the axial length and depending upon uh, the iris uh, level, uh, we have to uh, decide. 
So the the needless in, uh, sclerotomy is done. The needle is brought inside. The peripheral iris is held with the micro forceps, and uh, the needle is passed through. It is brought out of the tunnel. A U-turn is made. It is the re, the needle is reintroduced into the anterior chamber. And similarly, on the second site where I have to anchor, the needle is piercing the uh, peripheral iris and brought out uh, ab internal root. Now you can see when the suture is pulled on either side, you will see that the iris is uh, beautifully opposing. So once you get the proper approximation, make sure to trim the suture to about 1.5 millimeter, flange to about 1.5 millimeter. So we do not want to have a larger flange. And similarly, when the approximation is uh, perfect, one flange is buried and the second flange is buried. The burying of the second flange is a little difficult. You can see that the, sclera, the conjunctival uh, opening is here, whereas the flanges are here. The flanges are very small. So uh, previously with the 26 gauge needle, we were doing this, but uh, the problem, only problem is uh, the flange was a little larger because the 26 gauge uh, size is around 400 microns. We needed, we needed to suture, uh, use a lot of suture for planning around three to four millimeters of suture, which creates a big lump on the, uh, not in all patients, but in some patients, you'll see that. So in order to avoid that, we came up with the needle. So I'll uh, just move on to the uh, next uh, technique of uh, flange decephile. So this was a traumatic cataract where the uh, uh, subluxated cataract was removed. Anterior vitrectomy was done. No visco was used after that. The anterior chamber was formed tightly and using a similar same uh, type of needle attached to a 7-0 proline suture. Two sclerotomies, uh, six clock hours apart is done. The needle is exteriorized. The needles are trimmed. The using uh, so we don't need any fancy IOL or anything. Any PMMA lens with a dialing hole, be it single piece or three piece, the suture is passed from above to below uh, for better stability. The other way it does not work. So it has to the flange has to be underneath the IOL. So the suture here also is trimmed to about 1.5 millimeters. And make sure you do not touch the suture with your cartridge because once the cartridge touches the suture, you are going to have sharp ends which is going to erode the conjunctiva above it. It's very important that we. Uh, overlap the uh, make sure the flange is uh, overlapping the uh, conjunctiva and tenons as well so this is uh, just an image showing uh, why we uh, move the conjunctiva radially before making the sclerotomy so you move the conjunctiva radially to do the sclerotomy so at the end of surgery you will see that the flange and the conjunctival openings are at different uh, levels the main concern with flanges is all being in a straight line causing infection so when you do this there is uh, hardly any uh, you know, uh, direct passage into the uh, vitreous is not there from the outer. The conjunctiva scars in a day or two. So it's just an animation showing the same. <clears throat> you move the conjunctiva radially because conjunctiva being a tissue which moves only radially. Uh, so the conjunctival track and the scleral track is at uh, different levels. So uh, the uh, instrument required is a low power cautery, a spatulated needle attached to 7-0 proline or 6-0 proline. So apart from the innovative techniques, what did we bring to the table is we designed uh, this uh, spatulated needle. So the dimension of this needle is around 115 microns uh, and 16 millimeters in length. So comparing it with the 26 and 30 gauge needle, the uh, size of the sclerotomy is literally flat. So very little suture being flanged is enough and uh, it will plug the sclerotomy so beautifully and you will see no elevation in the tear film. Whereas when you use a 26 gauge or 30 gauge, it, it kind of makes a hole. You no know, retinal surgeons will know that. You know, when you make a sclerotomy with a 26 gauge, you're going to see a hole in the uh, sclera. With this, it is not going to be there. So the uh, suture length uh, being flanged is very less and you're not going to have a tear film elevation. And one other advantage is uh, the pressure required to make the uh, sclerotomy is very, very less compared to the 26 cut. So which is going to not cause any traction or damage the uh, eye uh, on the uh, interior of the eye. Advantages of this technique is uh, no peritomy, shorter learning curve, less time consuming, no scleral flaps or pockets, less chances of suture infection, suture tract infection, no good cosmosis in the immediate post-op picture. These are a few post-op pictures of the iridodialysis patients. And uh, so we've. Uh, this is the latest uh, results that we have. So this is the flange desafoil immediate post-op, and uh, we've done over 450 cases. We've not had uh, one case of infection till date. Touch wood. Uh, so I am very confident uh, in this technique, and uh, the one other reason why I really uh, am confident is because most of the complex procedures can be done only by a very experienced surgeon, but uh, most of this uh, cases out of the 450, probably around 200 has been done by my uh, fellows and uh, junior consultants. So, and the results are really promising. Thank you very much again for the opportunity. Thank you, uh, Nate, sir.
Great to hear you, sir. So just one question regarding the amount of flange. Is there anything for beginners of how much of amount we have to flange it? It should not neither be too thick or it is going to not bury. If it is too thin, it will slip inside. How do we decide the length in initial phase? Yes. So initially, it is better to use a caliper and you know around 1.5 millimeters. If you are using this needle, uh, uh, the spatulated needle that uh, kind of we designed, we have both 6.0 and 7.0. So 1.5, 2 millimeters is absolutely fine. One other thing that I would recommend beginners is to do a peritum. Uh, and do it so that you are sure that it is underneath the tenons. Once it's underneath the tenons, you don't have to worry at all. So once you are comfortable with that, then you can do without the peritomy, and then uh, you can bury it. Because burying that is the biggest challenge actually in surgery. That was the biggest learning curve. The rest, placing the IOL, flanging the IOL, everything is easy. But burying the flanges was something which we understood uh, later on. So that is one of the reasons why, if you see in that uh, sclerocarneal tunnel, uh, no one. Uh, we do not choose the traditional three and nine o'clock position. No, we chose an oblique angle where the uh, transconjunctival site, uh, there is a sclerotomy at the transconjunctival site and the other sclerotomy is somewhere where the peritomy is already been done. So the first we bury the transconjunctival site, that is easy because all you have to do is pull the suture on the opposite side, it will bury it. And this side, you flange it and you just overlap the conjunctiva, it is good. But when you are going to do a, a shortage of time, I am not showing the other uh, foldable IOL and CTS techniques, maybe next time. So there where we cannot uh, do, where I do not do a peritomy, we, we do have another maneuver how to bury the flanges. Yeah, thank Sir, you. about uh -huh. the cautery, uh, yes. <laughs> can we use the thread burners which we which are available on Amazon? Do we have to use a special surgical low temperature uh, cautery? Uh, the, those will definitely work, uh, John, but the problem is they are not uh, medical grader. They are not sterilized uh, properly. So I wouldn't recommend that. Uh, so actually, uh, Aura Lab makes these sutures for me and the uh, cautery is also provided by them. Uh, so with, with the cautery, you can ETO it and reuse it. You know, it will come uh, a couple of times. You know, you, you can use it for, uh, we almost use it every day in Pondicherry. The team uses it every day. So it comes for a few months, definitely. One or two months. Yes. Do we eat you the whole thing or only the tip of the metal? No, the whole thing. Whole thing. Whole thing including is including the battery. The battery would it? It's it's it, it's uh, you cannot remove the battery from it. So okay. it comes that way. So we buy it from Germany. So it comes that way. So once it stops working, you throw it and you get a new one. Okay. Okay. So battery is safe for ETO in this. Okay. Yes. Thank yes. you, sir. Yeah. yeah. Hi, Doctor Vivekanand. Uh, that is very nice thing. So I just had one small doubt. Uh, during SFL, you said you are going to extrahe the haptic portion also, or you are going to just bring out the sutures through the steel port and you are going to keep in the subconjunctal plane? No haptic externalization, sir. Uh, we just remove the, we use the regular PMMA and we anchor the uh, suture through the dialing hole like you saw in the video. So just the suture is being externalized and uh, flanged. Uh, it is the haptic, it is still wrapping the ciliary body then? No, sir. Uh, the positioning of the uh, IOL is, uh, uh, that's one thing which I forgot to mention. So we uh, try to position the IOL 0.5 millimeters behind the ciliary body, at the level of ciliary body. And so the IOL power is also uh, increased by uh, 0.5 diopters. If it is 21, we use a 21.5 diopters because we do not want to go do the sclerotomy through the uh, ciliary body because there is going to be a lot of bleeding post-op vitreous hemorrhage. We did have a few cases where it bled and all that. So we try to avoid, we try to stay a little posterior. That is one reason why it is mandatory to do a vitrectomy even if there is no vitreous disturbance. We want to re remove a little bit of the vitreous in the anterior vitreous space so that the IOL is positioned without uh, uh, disturbing it. Or, uh, you know, we don't want the vitreous to push the eye forward or anything. Okay. Did you notice any decentration of the tilting? Because it's only two-point fixation. Nowadays, people are saying... Yes, sir. sir surprisingly, uh, that is what everybody asks. Is there a wobble of the IOL? Is there a tilt of the IOL? Uh, I, I think uh, I've been telling this again and again. And uh, yesterday, I was talking to my friend, Dr. Nivian. He did a couple of cases and he was... Uh, I mean, she said it is very stable. There is no movement or anything. He did record videos of it also. The only thing is, sir, decentration can happen if the first flange is a little too much. Uh, the IOL is decentered already. You cannot pull the suture too much. But decentration, mild decentration is well tolerated. Tilt, yes, it can be there if one suture is tight, one suture is loose. So that uh, with uh, practice, it will come, sir. So we do, we do not have an intraoperative OCT to uh, assess if it is parallel to the iris or anything. But just with your uh, naked eye uh, visualization, it, it is uh, 
yeah i think a few cases and you will uh, really understand how it works it's uh, very easy sir very simple actually thank you sir i suppose uh, uh, this can be easily modified to make it three point fixation by adding another hole yes sir it is uh, first we thought of that sir we did a v type uh, initially also we tried a lot of things actually so passing the suture we had only the flanges on the exterior passing from outside and bringing it outside we uh, did all that but this is so stable uh, you don't need that sir this is much simpler one other point is the idea is not to stretch the suture too much or have it too tight the idea is to have the suture a little bit looser so that we do not uh, cause any uh, pressure on the conjunctiva or on the suture that is attached to the io on the sclera or on the suture that is attached to the io we have uh, almost 3 years of follow up now and uh, the results are amazing and if you are worried about the haptics rubbing on the ciliary body i suppose you can remove the haptics before you put it into the eye and just pull yes, it sir, out yes, sir, you can haptics, haptics but actually they do not rub sir we have oct images also because it is very po little posteriorly uh, positioned than uh, the ciliary body it does not rub usually um, uh, we can do that also sir in uh, some cases uh, we have tried that also we tried all that but since it is not bothering we do not uh, do that actually Thank you, sir. sir, I have just two clarifications. Uh, wonderful video. Actually, routinely as retina surgeon, I do the X slit and the other Gabbard technique. But this yes. technique I have just uh, seen recently in the PO meet also. So, just wanted to ask uh, the entry point is 1.5 millimeter from the limbus, right, sir? For uh, uh, sir, it varies, sir. If it is a myo, probably I will go a little yeah. more posterior to it. Ideally, okay. one point five millimeters away from the limbus. We try to avoid the ciliary body. I usually make the decision based on the iris plane. Okay, sir. And one more is the suture you use. Can you use that? We get that ten zero proline with double and long sutures, or uh, you get it from the oral lab. Oral lab. Uh, ten zero proline is very thin, sir. Then you'll have to suture okay. almost five six millimeters of suture, which will make a very big flange. So we okay. have the six zero and seven zero. Seven zero is available right now in the market. Six zero, they are bring uh, coming up. Okay. Uh, it is coming up in the market. Seven zero is actually perfect, sir. Seven zero is okay. Yes. Okay, sir. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Prasanna, you are muted, Prasanna. Thank you, Vivek, sir, for generating such a great interest with uh, not one but two of your innovations. Uh, over to our president, Dr. Nirmal, sir, to call over our chairperson, Dr. Pari, sir, uh, who will be moderating the next uh, capsule, the keynote capsule. So we wanted to have the innovators, the first few slots, and Suvin, sir, was gracious enough to uh, say, okay, and we had a good four innovative talks. So now we are waiting for the, uh, the man of the moment, uh, Suvin, sir, for his journey. Over to our president, Dr. Nirmal, sir, to uh, call Dr. Pari, sir, followed by uh, Dr. Suvin, sir, for the next capsule keynote uh, talk. Thank you, Prasanna. So it's indeed my uh, pleasure and privilege to introduce uh, Dr. Pari Kumar. So he's such a humble person. So he says uh, small before everything he do. As you see, his introduction itself starts with small private practitioners. So there's no smile, small private practitioner. All of us are practitioners. And uh, maybe Dharmaburi would be a small town compared to city, uh, major cities. But uh, a lot of good things happen from our uh, rural areas and towns. So, uh, Dr. Pari, you are welcome to jo uh, join us. You are also in the big league. So, he, he works in the field of healthcare, energy, stem cell research, and medical diagnostics. And uh, a multitasking person. And uh, uh, excellent uh, ophthalmic practitioners. I've seen many of his uh, uh, patients review uh, that uh, glorify him as a, a wonderful uh, uh, practitioner. He owns 11 granted patents from India, US, UK, and Australia, and 10 pending patents. So it's a huge inspiration for all the uh, innovators and youngsters here. And uh, I think you should share your journey of uh, getting how to get the patents and then uh, perceiving all these things. I know how difficult it is to even uh, take one patent, particularly in the Indian, from the Indian context. Has nine international and national publications in IJO, AJO, BMJ Innovation and Women Journal of Ophthalmology. And uh, I think for uh, 
the numbers sake he has left the indian publications he also owns a dit department of international trade supported uh, company in the uk for medical research manufacturing and uh, marketing and um, his wife is also a, a innovator and uh, she also holds uh, many patents in this in medical research and uh, medical innovations so glad to have you dr parik kumar here and we look forward to your comments and uh, in a, uh, words to words of wisdom to our youngsters thank you dr nirmal sir uh, the president of tnoa uh, for uh, introducing me and so glad uh, to be in this uh, innovators forum and uh, just one thing i would like to uh, you know uh, share with the youngsters uh, we must we must know the difference between uh inventions and innovations uh inventions are the basis inventions are the foundations and innovations are the changes that we make in day to day life and uh, based on the need uh, with all the wisdom and uh, medical uh, knowledge that we have i think we all must uh, know the difference between invention and innovation uh, we must indulge into inno inventions is my desire i want all the ophthalmic innovation innovations and inventions to be owned by ophthalmologists to be uh, promoted by ophthalmologists and to be used by the ophthalmologists for the betterment of the society and i want i, re I recommend all the innovators to patent your innovations ip protection is a very fundamental uh, thing that we must do both national and international patent coverage is a, a good idea for all the products because it is going to be useful for the entire ophthalmic society worldwide even the uh, small small things you know like uh, uh, tall lamp u tool uh, uh, this um, dr shruti presented on exploring myopia wearable device and all this devices are going to be useful for the entire ophthalmic community worldwide so i recommend that you get into patenting and uh, how to uh, make this products available in the market and we must uh, work on that and i uh, encourage all the youngsters Uh, to choose this path of uh, innovation and inventions uh, so that you know we bring out a lot of new products to the world thank you sir thank you pari sir uh, for a short and succinct uh, gist of your journey and words of enlightening wisdom for all the viewers i think we look up to you sir for uh, patenting and uh, what not so thank you once again sir uh, so i would like to uh, call upon uh, dr nirmal frederick sir our president tnoa for uh, introducing uh, tonight's star speaker uh, dr subin batachar ji sir over to you uh, president so thank you again uh, my privilege to introduce dr subin batachar ji inventor entrepreneur and i surgeon uh, who is also a wonderful uh, practitioner runs the Diane Eye Center Private Limited and uh, I think after his uh, invention he formed this committee Med Invent uh, company Med Invent Devices Private Limited and uh, we all know that uh, he is uh, known for his BX pupil expander but apart from that he is a gold medalist at the DST Lockheed Martin India Innovation Growth Program and uh, awards comprise all the top names in the innovation field silicon valley global commercialization support ic2 institute and the top notch business school stanford uh, graduate school of business so he is also won the aos p sivaradi international award for 2019 and uh, best paper session award at ascrs and is won the uh, colonel rangachari award for best overall paper at all india conference Santa Vision for Best Cataract Paper, an International Hero Award from the AOC, and runner-up award at the APSCRS Cataract Video Competition, and CS Reshmi Gold Medal for the best video, and uh, he's been the chief instructor in many AOC courses, instruction courses, at almost all the four uh, major conferences, including AOS, AAO, ASCRS, ESCRS, and uh, I think all the global uh, societies. So it's indeed a, a pleasure and privilege to welcome Dr. Subin to our uh, uh, TNOA webinar, 
and I'm sure uh, the young innovators, the young ophthalmologists and our uh, association will learn a lot from Suvin's ex experience and expertise. Thank you, Suvin, for consenting and joining us today evening. Over to you. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Nirmal, uh, and Dr. Prasanna for this very kind invitation and the entire uh, TNA. Dr. Ramkrishnan, sir, Dr. Tangavail, and all the office bearers of uh, Tamil Nadu of Thumb Negotiation. Uh, let me just share the screen. Yeah. Yeah. Is my screen visible? Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, thank you. So I'll be talking about my journey from idea to invention. And we have the privilege of having Dr. Pari Kumar over here and who uh, will, of course, agree with me that it's a long and arduous journey. And we would like to brace our younger uh, colleagues with a little bit of information so that it holds them in good stead going forward. So. see. Slides are not, uh, yeah. So my association with the TNOA, Tamil Nadu and uh, TNOA uh, goes actually pretty long back. Uh, I spent uh, my early childhood, a lot of you, you might not know, I spent my early childhood in uh, Madras. It was Madras then. I did a bit of schooling in Madras. And then I studied for long nine years in Jipma, Pondi, number Pondi. So, and then, uh, of course, I did uh, attend, but the earliest Oftal conferences that were, uh, I attended were MSOA, I think it was Tenalvel, and then uh, I think Salem. I remember Dr. Siddharthan's wonderful hospitality where we went to Yerkod. So uh, that's my assertion. I do speak fluent Tamil very fluently. So it takes a wise man to learn from his mistakes. We all know that. But it's an even wiser man to learn from others. And that's what we want our younger colleagues to do. Because we've had our deal. So you, I do uh, acknowledge uh, my financial interest by virtue of my association with management devices. Now, time and again, it's going to get tough. And it's a good idea to turn around and look. Each one of the innovators who have presented over here knows the journey. And it's always good, you know, when you have these presentations, it gives you an opportunity to look back and see how far you've already progressed. And that works like a wonderful shot in the arm. I would urge all of you to do that time and again. That uh, kind of, you know, uh, uh, kicks you to go further. When I have, I'm, I'm in my states of depression, all the USFDA registration, the ASCRS papers, and all these awards that I do look at them. Uh, trust me, uh, like a child, I look at them time and again in my, uh, when I'm in my blues, I do look at them. This is a wonderful testimony by Professor Titiel. And this was actually no mean uh, achievement, Dr. Professor, uh, Dr. Chang, David Chang presenting this at the AO Spotlight in 2021. Uh, this was a big shot in the arm for us. And then, of course, this video that's there in the uh, AO website. So now what is most important is, as all innovators will acknowledge, you know, the end finished product looks very different. Uh, most of us would start with practically no plans. There are no elaborate plans. There's no real drawing board, so to say, uh, to chart our path when we start out. Uh, for me, I was uh, I'm a nice surgeon, and when I started out on this particular project, I was already 20 years into private practice. Uh, yes, I was an innovator by choice, then, but the I became an entrepreneur by, entrepreneur by circumstances. Kind of circumstances kind of forced me to become an entrepreneur. And some of you might have to choose to take that path if you want to commercialize your invention and take it forward. So be prepared for that. Uh, I I believe it's very important to set very clearly defined targets. And you must be focused on those. So my targets were very simple. I needed a device that uh, people expanded that would pass through very small incisions. It should be simple, really simple to understand, simple to use, and simple to manufacture. And of course, given our scenario, we need to be affordable. Others, the uptake is going to be poor. So. This is where we stand, it come out to a 0 0.9 millimeter inc uh, incision. And that is about very, very high. So that's incision. And 
Now, when we hold that flange, I mean, this came by trial and error, when you hold that flange across and try to push it in, anything more than 1.5, that flange is not going to go in. So, but we end it, when we align the device longitudinally into the incision, then it passes through 1.2 millimeter incision, and that's a huge achievement. We are still waiting for IOLs to go in through that incision size. Uh, they've not been very successful. And removal through a side port can be very, very useful in tight situations with IFIS and other situations, the shallow entry chamber. So that would be a huge plus for any device. Of course, you have the option of removing it through the main incision. It just is a walk in the park then. And you have a wonderful round pupil. So the next part is we all have great ideas and innovators. Uh, all of us are innovators, uh, whether we like it or not. But it's most important to be ruthlessly critical about your own idea. And that would save you a lot of time, energy, and money and, and emotion. You see, you go halfway, you spend a lot of money, you spend some time, and then you see that it's not rewarding enough for you to dump it. Uh, it's not a great uh, utilization of your time. So what is important is we need to see that what we try to innovate or invent is desirable to the user, and it's possible with current technology. You can't have a science fiction uh, thing, which would probably take another 20 years for the technology that we have to come, and you would actually be just be a kind of building castles in the air. So, And what is viable in the marketplace? Uh, you could have a wonderful keratome, which costs 10,000 uh, bucks. Nobody's going to buy it. So it makes no sense making a keratome, which is it may be doing wonders, but then it's not going to help you. Uh, it's not nobody's going to buy it from you. So there are only two questions that every innovator needs to answer. Is there an unmet need? Is there a void over there which needs to be filled? And is it enough to make people put their hands into the pocket and pay for the product? Trust me, every day I think of that and uh, I have to struggle to see that. <clears throat> Look for people who teach you to fish. You see, to offer ready-made solutions is great. They are very helpful people. But it's more important to kind of sow that seed of thinking in you and get you to a process. It's not the end product, it's the process. You could apply that process to every step of innovation and, and invention and development as you go forward. Like it said, give a man a fish and you feed him for a day and you teach him to fish and you feed him. You can learn fishing on your own. There are guides. So if you go onto the internet, this is a fishing guide and you could uh, help yourself. So if you uh, don't find ready-made solutions, you don't have a mentor, you don't have a guide, a godfather, so to say, you can learn to begin to fish yourself. Apply, apply for grants. Now, there are plenty of grants which go uh, begging. Uh, this uh, San, San Gupta Research Association was... Uh, telling us that uh, there are hardly any applications. So most of innovators, if you have a funding issue, you could probably uh, write the uh, SRA. What an uh, application for a grant does, it slices your thoughts. Whatever was fuzzy and was on your uh, back of the napkin drawing gets kind of more crystallized here to make a formal presentation. What you learn is word economy. Now, what I mean by that, if you have a five lakh rupee grant and the word limit is thousand words, you just divide five lakhs by 1,000, and it's 5,000 rupees per word. Now you start writing your grant application. That will make sense. When you start counting your words and say, okay, the value of each word is 5,000 rupees, and I have to choose my words very carefully, it makes sense. You go through a process of scrutiny and validation, and that kind of you know uh, uh, gives more authenticity to your uh, claims. And uh, see, but as postgraduates, all of us know how to review literature and write papers. So that it, this should come pretty easily to us. It's just that we don't have that, uh, we don't get over that inertia. And most important, announce your work. Like most of our innovators over here doing papers, plenty of present your papers, videos, talk at me. Uh, you need to keep reminding people that what you're doing and tell them. And today the internet all out, I mean, not uh, now. I mean, I when I started in, on this project, internet was very much available. But when we early we, we had only uh, live face to face conferences and not much of internet work over there. Look for non standard solutions. See, we need to think out of the box because if there was a standard solution, somebody else would have thought of it already and it would be available already in the market. 
If it's not there, that means we have to look for uh, uh, some other alternative ways. So sometimes try to look outside the medical device industry. Now let's take an example over here. In my case, my these were my earliest meaningful drawings. So I wanted an open ring, a single plane, a clover leaf. Now the whole my idea was that if it's like a string, I can pull it through the side port and uh, get it across, and it would come into the entry chamber, and it could go going through very small incisions. So that's the idea with which I started. Uh, I didn't find much of support with the medical device industry, and uh, they refused to invest money or even suggest ideas. So what I did was I said, OK, uh, there's not much over here, so let's go and talk to a plastic industry expert. This was a very informal meeting, and the gentleman just sat in his room, and I was talking to him across the table, and he said, oh, why don't you, so now you want a springy material, you want a string, take a piece of nylon, uh, what you suture material, you take it, or wind it on a nail and put it in your kitchen oven, and uh, you see how it works. He told me the temperature settings are all, I mean, just a rough temperature. He said, you can, it's a bit of trial and error, and you can uh, do it. He said, do it yourself. He said, don't look forward to me. I'm not going to help you. I'm telling you the process. So that was, he taught me fishing. So I did it myself. And that was, this is my uh, wife's kitchen oven. And that's the birthplace of the first BX ring or the butter charger ring at the studio, called uh, in those days. See, this is the spring that looked like this was, I think, 3-0 nylon. And uh, this was a huge turning point in my development of the BX people expander. Uh, it is all of us know over here who have presented that we will have roadblocks. That is part of the process. And we should be anticipating that after one point, actually, all innovators kind of know that, OK, sooner or later, I'm going to meet with a roadblock. So you should prepare in advance mentally and you should be prepared to step back. Once you step back, it's easy for you to see the detour. When you're very close to the roadblock, you really are blinded and you don't see much. So you need to step back a little. Let's be flexible. I'll show you, I'll tell you an example. So we should be able to switch to plan B or plan C if plan A doesn't work. Now, the typical roadblocks that we faced, uh, we face are prototyping and patenting, uh, clinical testing, validation, peer acceptance. Peer acceptance is, it's right now, I'm at a stage where peer acceptance is pretty easy, but uh, it wasn't so easy to start with. Commercialization is a big ask. So let's talk about again my device. So the BX design ha device had to be simple, as I said, open ring, single plane, clover leaf. Now this is my first. I think this was three zero and ring. So uh, the I, the pupil itself kind of you know compressed it and it came together. So I said, okay, fine. So uh, the square device doesn't work. So let me let's make more notches and flanges. So I added more notches and flanges. It did work, but then uh, things, the legs came close together and sometimes they even interlocked. It was very embarrassing during the surgery. I had one particular surgery, I remember I had a tough time and then I gave up and I operated through that pupil size itself. So now I realized that I needed to close the ring. That would help me. So I had to switch to plan. I actually didn't have a plan B. I evolved the plan B at that point in time. And in entrepreneur's language, actually, or startup language, it's called pivoting. For those who are, of us who have played basketball, we are very familiar with the pivoting. We keep one foot in one place and the other foot keeps wandering around and looking for an opportunity. Now, so I wanted to close that nylon ring. It says that it's very difficult to join nylon end to end. What you need is ultrasonic welding. I couldn't afford that. So what I did was I tried same cyanochloride glue, acrylic glue or fabricate five bucks kind of made my day and it was kind of a, my eureka moment for that time and there was no stopping after that so sometimes we need to give luck a chance luck is important it is important and but we have to create that opportunity for luck to work so this is the closed uh, hexagon the glued joint now it looks very elegant and these were working wonders so i immediately moved to medical device grade sign up today come a long way with the BX ring as you can see the evolution it's been quite a process and the finished, uh, current uh, version of the device looks very different from where we started but then that is the journey like I said you need to promote your work you need to keep talking talking and talking uh, I'm sure you are, uh, you see my blanket uh, emails uh, whatsapp you got bombarded carpet bombing as I would say Facebook I do post on TNOA also. Uh, I, I know 
it can get annoying. But then I have to remind uh, my colleagues time and again that this is there and this is available. And every time I carpet bomb, actually, I get a few inquiries. And that encourages me for the next one. Uh, apologies for those. Then uh, that's how things work everywhere in the world. I need to publish. Publish yourself. Get others to publish. Once it's there in the market, people will start using it. Once it's useful, it will start automatically propagating and publishing. These are very three important three pillars, uh, I would say, of innovation. We need to talk intelligently, deal extremely methodically, and work diligently. There is no substitute for that because our time is very precious. We've got clinical work, we've got uh, other things, we've got our personal lives, and, and we have got this extra thing which may fetch results or may not fetch results. It may fetch money or may not fetch money. So that investment may be absolutely uh, sunk costs. Otherwise, and if you don't talk intelligently, you talk to everybody about an invention without kind of securing your idea, you might end up with a picture like this and it happens very, very often. So when I get a call from a younger colleague, I first tell them, have you protected your idea? Before you speak to anybody, have you, have you signed a non-disclosure agreement? Should you patent? Dr. Pari Kumar said, yes, you must patent. Yes, but it does cost a lot of money. So before you embark on that journey, you must be sure that it's going to be worth it. So if your idea is viable in the marketplace, it is good to go ahead and try to patent it because irrespective of whether it gets patented or not, whether you get a grant or not, you are going to earn from it and at least recover your costs. The real journey, the big real deal is actually a lot more than what is visible. What you see is the tip of the iceberg and what it actually entails, a device bringing it from the bench to the clinics and commercialization. There are various aspects in the device, patent, pure acceptance and commercialization, and each one has an arm which extends pretty long over years. Uh, a gentle reminder for all our younger colleagues over here, uh, for us who've got a little bit hardened and uh, thick skinned over the years, uh, you, it's easier for us to face this, this world, but it's going to be tough for you. It's going to be bouquet, bouquets and brickbats throughout. You have appreciation in the morning, in the evening, somebody is going to come back with a nasty comment, uh, not because of your work, but the way you probably publicize or the way you talk about it, you'll have to take it in your stride and move ahead. Now, there is a bit of a big uh, love-hate relationship between doctor, colleagues, and innovation. And I found it really very strange, especially in our country. Now, the first thing that I ask, how much does it cost? What's the discount on it? Even our doctors, very established, big hospitals, big corporate hospitals, the first thing they ask is, what's the discount? But yet, so doctors love to benefit financially from ideas with make surgery easier and affordable. I believe it's unholy and sinful for doctors to gain financially from their ideas. They hate to discuss cost publicly. You, are, you put it in a WhatsApp group and say, oh, this is commercial. Don't discuss. Let's discuss only science, pure science. Now, where is pure science without your device? I mean, how do you going to, how do you going to give the younger people a break? So let's please uh, shed that holy garb and realize that doctor innovators have a right to earn from their ideas and invention. Intellectual property is an asset like any other house, land, property, stocks, shares. I mean, they don't mind, our colleagues don't mind uh, doctors going into horse races and uh, property and trading shares and anything. But when it comes to selling your own, own invention and earning from it, it's highly objectionable. I don't know. I really have never fathomed the depth of this uh, particular concept. So let's have a heart for uh, the person who's making, is working so hard to save your money and make your surgery easier. Trust, I think all of uh, the innovators over here will agree that the time we put into an inv invention or innovation, if we put that same time into clinics, we would have so that money is not really what we are running after. And like I said, and that is the time when you're going to go feel uh, very low and you, at the end of the day, suddenly one when you get a uh, uh, these wonderful colleagues. This is a real shot in the arm for me. And the number of testimonials on my website, on our website or Google reviews is really increasing every day. It's swelling every day. So uh, that makes me happy. I get at least one text message almost every uh, two, uh, uh, 
showing that I use this uh, sir and it was very helpful that that is that makes my day so we uh, have uh, friends over here including Arun Mori sir over here who's been a great support for me these are our google reviews there are lots of videos and I'm happy that uh, people are enthusiastic to share uh, the, the usage of the new device. They put it on the net. It just so shows the eagerness of surgeons to share something which is new and how excited they are. And these are our exports. That again makes me happy that from an, from India and from the background that we come, if we're able to export to the US and all the other countries, it is uh, indeed a fact. Now, uh, here are some wonderful innovators over the years, off tile innovators. I'm sure you're all familiar with these faces. Oops, uh, did I miss one over here? I think it's not showing up. Not really. I'm looking forward to your faces over here and your innovation over here. So let's uh, look forward to uh, seeing some. innovations from our colleagues in TNR, AIS, and from the world over. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Zubin, sir, for this wonderful, uh, innovative journey that you had with all the mental mindset and mental stamina that we need to have to go forward. And I think I am one of the few disturbing you with a lot of videos of VX off late. Better late than never, but I, I think I also joined the club recently. Thank you, sir. Comments from Pari, sir, and our president, uh, Dr. Nirmal, sir, on the keynote lecture. Thank you, Dr. Sohan. Uh, it was a wonderful talk. Uh, I'm sure it has inspired, uh, it will inspire everyone, particularly the youngsters here and those who are watching on the YouTube. Uh, I've heard your uh, story and seen your uh, videos many times. It's quite inspiring to see your journey from uh, Chennai and Pondicherry to, uh, to Bengal and the world over. So it's nice to see our colleague going places and uh, your innovation is probably one of the best from our part of the country. So thank you for uh, joining us and for your inspiring story. Thank you very much. Next over to... Uh... Uh, an amazing talk by uh, Sir. We have Dr. Fatima, so who finished her, her master's in Aravindai Hospital, Madurai, and she works as a pediatric ophthalmologist in Aravindai Hospital, Tirunelveli. So she's got a lot of awards to herself. She's got the tunnel stamp, which she's done, fundus assessment technique, which we are going to know about, the pupillary reflex at ease. And also she's published a lot of related to these innovations in IGO. And uh, so many were asking, what are the other ways to see when I send this message? They said that we have indirect, we have direct. I said, come listen to Dr. Fatima to know what other ways to see the fundus. Over to you, Dr. Fatima. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Nishant, uh, Dr. Prasanna, and uh, uh, respected uh, DNV office bearers. Uh, th thank you for this wonderful opportunity. I hope uh, my slide, my screen is visible. Is my screen visible? Uh, no, ma'am. No, uh, we are no, not no, able to see the text. Uh, the screen sharing has happened, but the text we are not able to see. It's plain white. We are seeing a blank white screen, ma'am. Oh, sorry. Uh, let me do it again. Yes. Uh -huh. You need to stop sharing and start sharing again. Is it okay now? Yes. yes. Well, now it is come. Yes. Thank you. Uh, okay, let me uh, discuss about this technique, uh, fundus assessment during cataract surgery. So when do we need this technique? Uh, like when do we need to assess fundus intraoperatively? Uh, it, pediatric ophthalmologists usually uh, like to uh, assess fundus in general anesthesia comfortably because next day it would be a big struggle to... 
versus fundus in a child. So uh, the indirect ophthalmoscopy is the uh, followed technique, but the disadvantage is one has to uh, depend upon the assistant to wear the indirect ophthalmoscope in a sterile manner. So that consumes time. And uh, um, most of us, many of us would have observed that viscoelastics over cornea will give a glimpse of uh, fundus sometimes. Uh, I have particularly observed our uh, chief, uh, Dr. Meenakshi, uh, who uh, tries to place visco in a small uh, infants uh, so that may sometimes the fundus is visualized and uh, thereby we can avoid indirect ophthalmoscopy examination and cut short the anesthesia time. Uh, so, but it was not possible in all cases. So that question was the beginning of this idea to arise. The other indications where we need fundus assessment during cataract surgery would be mature cataract because a good FACO and with an expensive IOL implantation and next day uh, in rare occasion, if a macula scar is there, it would be a difficult situation to handle uh, both for a patient and surgeon. So in such situations, intraoperative uh, fundus visualization and prognostication and discussing with patient would be very much helpful. And for CAM patients who fail to come for follow-up uh, to screen fundus, we can utilize this technique intraoperatively. Next day with the edema, we did not uh, struggle, particularly with the uh, well, uh, beginner surgeons. And during intraoperative complications like posterior capsule rupture, we can assess the fundus for any dropped uh, lens material. So uh, why this visco over cardia is not possible? Uh, based on that, there were two concepts in my mind. One was if we place uh, some circular device to hold the viscoelastics in place, it may be helpful. And viscoelastics in different heights may help to focus different axillas. Th these are the two initial thoughts. So there were uh, different ideas from uh, other, other uh, assistants and colleagues. Like here, sterile femtoring, and this is the PVA uh, readily available uh, sponge that is used for C3 or uh, therapy. And this is a cut portion of test chamber and one enthusiastic assistant bought the bottle cap. But we can readily use this standard uh, Tariq uh, IOL marker. After doing a posterior capsule rexis, we can place the circular marker. Uh, it, should have a, it should have some height. That kind of uh, Tariq marker should be selected. And the layer of viscoelastics can be applied. And uh, preferably, the illumination can be changed to retroillumination. And the microscope should be lowered down to little to visualize the fundus, uh, visualizing the disc and the fovea. That's what we uh, pediatric ophthalmologist would most likely to uh, have during our cataract surgery. And this is uh, when I suggest to use for outreach patients. The other question would be that is it. Uh, cost effective. So I like to demonstrate that just when we select a small sized ring, this 0.1 cc of viscoelastic even is sufficient to screen the fundus. You can uh, the, uh, actually uh, in real time, the view is better. In the videography is not that good because the small ring uh, hinders the illumination. For recording purpose, we can have wider rings, but for screening, the smaller rings would do the purpose. After doing in uh, multiple cases, we understood the circular device was good enough and uh, to uh, them visualize the fundus. But this concept was not uh, correct because we need just a layer of viscoelastics to visualize the fundus. And while going back after finding out something to give scientific explanation when I was going through a uh, search of articles, this was a wonderful uh, under, uh, when, when a person goes underwater, meaning when a person dies into, dies into water, the eye vision gets blurred. Because, this is because the refractive index of the cornea, aqueous humor, and water are almost same. And the cornea, the powerful refractive element, loses the refractive property. Based upon this, I try to give some explanation for the uh, phenomenon that is happening with our technique. Here, uh, the light rays from the retina uh, coming to uh, coming and meeting the strong posterior corneal surface, it diverges and does not reach the operating microscope in normal situation. But when we place a circular device and place viscoelastics, what happens is this curved interface becomes flat interface and this becomes one unit because the refractive index of the cornea and viscoelastics are almost similar. 
So this uh, yeah, flat interface diverges the light rays little and uh, we are able to see the fundus through the operating microscope. Uh, while uh, searching in the literature, we could find out two articles related to this. One is uh, they have used a wide angle gonio uh, mirror. Again, uh, the cost factor is involved there. And another technique is uh, uh, injecting air bubble and filling the air bubble, uh, filling the antechamber with the air bubble and visualizing the fundus. Uh, again, this needs thorough washing of the anterior chamber and then injecting air bubble. Uh, but our technique does not need washing, just uh, from outside we can, we can apply viscoelastics and uh, visualize. Here is a case where uh, the dropped cortex is being seen uh, using this technique, but uh, it does not. Uh, uh, truly speaking, if the vitreous is much disturbed, it will not be always uh, this clear like that of in this case. And the further implications based upon this idea is uh, measuring intra uh, intraocular. Uh, uh, for example, the standard optic diameter measures more because of the corneal magnifying factor. The 6 mm optic does not measure 6, it's measuring more than that. So what we do is if we keep our device there and pour uh, either balance salt solution or viscoelastics, and now when we measure the optic diameter is exactly the same six. So it is helpful for a, a research purpose when we like to measure the intraocular uh, pupil diameter or excess diameter, it would be useful than, rather than uh, using intracameral caliper. And also based upon this uh, idea, we are trying to make a Rexis uh, guide. It is in uh, process. So I like to sincerely acknowledge our seniors in uh, Terminal Vedi and also uh, Chief Medical Officer Dr. Venkates in Pondicherry because his support through our Arvind Center for Eye Care Innovation is uh, tremendous. Thank you, Fatima. Uh, yeah. Ma'am, you're not audible, ma'am. Yeah. Thank, thank you, ma'am. Uh, thank you for this presentation. Uh, can we have the panel's comments on it as we uh, uh, get ma'am back online? Yes. Uh... Dr. Fatima, it's a very good presentation. Uh, Prasanna, if I might just button. Is that okay? Yes, Am I audible? You're audible, sir. Very clear. I think uh, this is a wonderful innovation. It makes sense in uh, post FACO when we hydrate the wound and make the anterior chamber rock hard. Sometimes in topical FACO, they say they have sudden uh, blurring of vision or they're not able to focus on the lights. We can always put this and see for central artery pulsations. Other we have made the IOP very high for them to cause central artery pulsation to cause that uh, CRAO-like symptom. So immediately we can uh, deflate the anterior chamber and reduce the IOP. So I think this will be, I, I did try doing this. We didn't use a Mendes marker. We used another ring, like the C3R ring, and uh, we put a, a hylogel, a sodium hyaluronate, you can see. But you need a microscope with a coaxial illumination. You can't do it in the standard microscopes. You should have a retro illumination or a coaxial illumination microscope only in the higher end microscopes this will be used uh, no dr tiswar even uh, it, actually it is visible even with uh, other illumination but it is more clearer with the uh, coaxial okay. uh, fatima ma'am i have a quick doubt uh, so actually i was using a rexus marker and uh, on topical cases sometimes uh, the sister puts a saline right so actually the reason off late in my or i started noticing that uh, with the Rixis marker, I think that formed a well, and even the saline was actually causing the fundus view yeah. to be seen, but it was not reproducible. I, I mean, I had some uh, for 10 cases, I tried to reproduce it, but I was having it for six or seven cases. So, I think, uh, what is your take on? Uh, yeah, the, the, even the balance salt solution is sufficient to visualize the fundus. The problem is it will not stand uh, there, uh, viscoelastics will be more easier to hold in place. Uh, because uh, the uh, refractive index of water uh, valence on solution is also almost uh, the same of that of the cornea and uh, viscoelastics. Okay. Uh, does the uh, sodium uh, high, uh, high visc or uh, viscote make a difference? Um, 
uh we tried but it didn't make a different actually i didn't uh, uh like to try because it is again uh, more expensive than uh, hpmc when hpmc serves the purpose um i feel uh, and it is not that superior to uh, hpmc thank you thank you i think hpmc will overflow whereas this will be like a blob You may not even require that Mendy's marker ring, like she said. So you can uh, just put a blob and see it directly. Yeah, but anyway, uh, um, uh, having a device there will be uh, uh, needed uh, because uh, even this thought was there, uh, and uh, my uh, my senior colleague uh, Dr. Sivak Kumar sir, uh, he suggested this only. Uh, uh, maybe uh, this high high viscous high molecular weight viscous elastic may not. flow and but uh, so this device uh, there in place and viscous elastics makes some difference so, uh, can i pitch in uh, just just yes. before we yes. move sir yes 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 uh, yeah uh, i think this device actually works on the principle of the tubulins that we had uh, for, uh, to view as a like negative uh, high convex lens so it is attaching on the cornea and then it is creating a plane surface so it is negating the corneal power and you can see the fundus so if we put a blob it might not give the same thing and you you have a convexity again and then uh, it 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 might not work so better to have a well so that it have it has a plane surface on the top and then it it will work yeah we have to make sure that we will uh, we do not overflow it we just uh, try to make a uh, flat layer of the viscous elastics so that the top layer should be flat it will be more clearer with that yeah thank you thank you dear panel and uh, fatima ma'am so move on to the next speaker uh, dr vandana sundaram ma'am uh, so she has graduated with three gold medals ms from amrita she has done cornea refractive surgery and eye banking fellowship uh, mentored uh, by dr uh, jk reddy sir she has won the young researcher award at aos 2018 awarded the best paper in refractive surgery at tnoa 2023 and presented various uh, papers in national and international conferences one recently in the escrs and uh, the innovation of the first surface ablation ma'am and her team which she'll be sharing with us today the best of igo certificate awardee 2023 and she is associated with shankara eye hospital since 2019 and currently working as a registrar at the same institute uh, over to you ma'am to enlighten us one on one of the high profile new innovations that is doing the bus in cornea and refractive surgery the sitting positions world's first surface ablation in the upright position you are on mute ma'am mute here yeah. so i hope i'm audible right now Yeah, yeah, you're audible. Yeah, so this is the thank you to in a way for this wonderful opportunity. Uh, so this is a world's first surface ablation in upright seated uh, position. Here you can see uh, this is basically called as a sidio system because sidio in Spanish basically means to sit. So this is in sitting position. It offers cyclotorsion free eczema laser surface ablation. So this was a revolutionary first uh, laser uh, uh, laser machine to apply the beam right to the eye via the robotic applicator in sitting position. So this has got the eczema laser, which is already in the market, which is a Micron M7, which is by the Excel company. It's already in the market. So only thing newly which was done was the robotic applicator arm and the sit, uh, sit lamp uh, delivery system. So here, what you can see, what is done is uh, the green light is first focused at the pupil, making sure that the green light bisects the pupil, and then the pupil centration visual axis alignment is done, and then the laser delivery is done via the foot pedal and the touch screen panel. So this is a short video that we shot uh, with the volunteer. As you can see, the eye is already paracaine is installed. Eye is already painted with cobidon iodine, and then the patient uh, comes and sits in front of the machine. Then a speculum is placed, and once a speculum is placed, and the patient uh, she keeps her chin on the chin rest. So now to maintain the position, a headband is then applied. Here you can see the green fixation light. So then uh, just like how we do in the slit lamp, here you have X, Y, and Z uh, movers. Using that, you bisect the pupil. and then uh, look at for eye centration here also the same thing which can be seen through the touch screen panel so once the centration is achieved the laser is then applied so then uh, the headband is removed and followed by removal of the speculum one thing which is not included here is the machine actually comes with the reclination chair so once you're done with the ablation you can recline the chair and then apply uh, mmc and wash 
So this is another video where you can see the laser application to the eye because the less operating distance is less thermal accumulation as well. And this is again the flying spot uh, laser. So you can see there is good fixation, good eye tracking, and patient is also able to concentrate on the procedure. So here, uh, as far as the range of refractive error that we uh, corrected in our studies, so we did about around 40 eyes. So you can see uh, spherical power, we corrected between minus uh, six to plus three diopters and cylindrical corrector, uh, powers uh, were corrected between minus 3.5 diopters to plus 2.5 diopters. So we corrected both the uh, range of refractive errors as well as a lot of patients with post cataract surgery residual refractive. We also, uh, here you can see um, a patient who had uh, myopia, simple myopic, uh, simple myopia, and he was corrected. So preoperatively, you can see the pentacam. And on the right, you can see the postoperative pentacam, which is showing well-centered ablation. What so this is another that? patient who underwent uh, hyperopic ablation. Yeah, you can see the worried. nice central steepening, yeah. which is again corresponding to the hyperopic ablation. So now uh, we are actually did a few cases of PTK also. We took uh, around uh, six patients. Uh, actually, all six of them were from the same family. They had like a Reese buckler variant of uh, stromal dystrophy. So corneal thickness was around uh, 750 microns preoperatively. Here in the ASO city also, you can see the hyperreflective, which is corresponding to around 260 microns. So patient underwent 260 microns of sitting uh, PRK. And here you can see at one week itself, vision improved around 612. And the vision was maintained at six months for about... Uh, uh, to about uh, six nine, and the uh, corresponding ASO city also, you can see there is a decrease in hyperreflectivity corresponding to the area that was zipped. So this video system is basically it offers cyclotorsion free eczema laser. So it's got a very compact workstation. It is very safe and accurate, and it's less time consuming. It is also patient friendly and comfortable, and uh, it's also claustrophobia free. Um, let's remember that all these patients with refractive errors are very comfortable with strict lamp examination because they would have had that right from childhood. So they're not, they don't have an aversion towards uh, the slit lamp. So this kind of uh, laser delivery was much comfortable and easier for them. This also has got a less complex mechanics and it's got a large working space. And it's also got less environmental influence on laser beam delivery because of the short operation and aspiration distance, there's less plume and there's less of that smell as well. So, but the main thing is it offers cyclotorsion free eczema. So thank you. Thanks a lot uh, for this opportunity. I'd also thank my uh, mentor, Dr. J.K. Reddy. So this whole uh, project is his uh, brainchild. So he motivated us and uh, uh, thanks. Amazing, Dr. Vandana. So I've listened to these talks and uh, it always inspires me. So this machine is, uh, I mean, uh, still in the R&D phase or uh, is it going to be uh, in the market? Uh, it's going to be in the market soon now that we've finished our uh, study entirely, but we're still working on a few more things like presbyopia correction as well. So I think uh, we'll do that uh, and then uh, it'll be soon available. Okay. Uh, wonderful work, Dr. Vandana. And uh, of course, JK is uh, a genius. And uh, I would uh, urge uh, Prasanna to kind of, uh, whenever you have the opportunity, Try to get JK some time. I don't know if you've already had him. He is a brilliant guy, brilliant guy. The number of innovations he has uh, and the simplicity with which he presents them, it's its amazing. It's amazing. He's got phenomenal work. Please do get him and you have, he's your home faculty. Yes, sir. I had I had a good time in APOA when I had breakfast with sir and uh, he was do guiding me for the one, one and a half hours on how to go about things. He is a superbly talented person and his knowledge about IOLs and technology is, he is really a, a brilliant guy. My, my, he must benefit from us. Incidentally, my mentor and uh, Vandana ma'am's mentor are very thick friends. Sir. So during my <laughs> tenure in Coimbatore, uh, I have met sir a lot of times at uh, my mentor's place. And, and, uh, I think it's a small world at the end of the day. And I think we are all learning from each other. Uh, Devi Priya, ma'am, a uh, few comments from you on this uh, uh, state-of-the-art world's first uh, sitting poster innovation that they have done. Actually, she has seen the machine herself because she's from okay. Shankara. So she has see, actually seen the machine first time. She's not seen the, I mean, the procedure being done, but she's seen the machine first time. We're always proud of JK sir and his innovations. He keeps thinking ahead of time, always. And this is one such thing. And very good presentation, Vandana. And we are proud that it's being presented in international forum as well. I Looking we, forward for it to come back, come to the market. I think we took ma'am straight from ASARS into the TNOA webinar. 
thank you thank you ma'am and thank you thank you i think we had a wonderful uh, uh, wonderful six talks i think vignesh is still having some technical glitches i believe and he has just texted that he'll be not be able to present so it's very unfortunate so that brings us to the closure of this particular meeting so few words from our chairperson uh, dr pari kumar sir and suvin sir before we ask uh, nirmal sir to take over the session yes sir dr pari sir over to you thank you prasanna um i congratulate all the presenters and all the uh, members of the dais and uh, it was amazing uh, to see all <laughs> uh different perspectives on different uh, out of the box thinking uh, from everybody uh, dr suvan has uh, literally poured out my heart what are, what all were running in my heart it just literally poured out and it was a wonderful concise uh, you know um and a kind of a message to all the innovators uh, so take all the message from him and uh, learn um, keep practice everything and uh, definitely we all will uh, come up with new concepts and new ideas which are useful for the society and for the ophthalmologists uh, so uh, i congratulate all the presenters and uh, the tnoa team for uh, this wonderful opportunity thank you uh, so win sir uh, uh, yeah uh, thank you for this opportunity first of all and i must say i'm amazed with the number of innovations that we are seeing today uh i have uh, i think dr parik kumar nirmal and i uh, those then uh, dr nirmal is a little senior to us so but we have seen uh, what innovation meant 10 years back and what it means today and if you look at our state society city meetings everywhere the innovation is the buzzword and the way youngsters are taking up arvind is doing phenomenal work by encouraging it uh, and everybody is so so that you know once that kind of spurs our uh, younger colleagues to uh, go forward and of course the story uh, i poured my heart out and that is the story of most of the innovators uh, nothing nothing it's not going to be very different from that but then when we share a common uh, story it also encourages us to the, when we are uh, depressed or when we are in our lows so Uh, yes it's amazing to see all innovators and we having these uh, platforms uh, gives them an opportunity to showcase their work uh, and uh, earn appreciation that's most important we need to encourage what we need to understand is for every successful innovation there are at least 100 failures and the guys who have failed have actually led us on the right path they have failed and kind of guided us to the right path so they are the kind of the, the they are on sitting on the pavement over there and guiding you to go on the right path so they we need to even encourage failures we need to embrace failures and encourage them because a failure will tell you that okay we don't choose that path that's very important so all of our, i would urge all our colleagues who are in a position to support younger colleagues please do not uh, discourage a failure encourage them guide them to go on to the right path or take an alternate path but please do help them thank you very much thank you dr suvan that was a, a wonderful talk and uh, closing remarks i i still recollect uh, our meeting in one of the conferences sharing yes. your room and your long story and when prasanna asked whom to invite have uh, no second thoughts about inviting you to tnoa of course there are many uh, inspiring innovators here and uh, you are right we had a difficult time because at that time the world was closed no internet or uh, anything when we started our career so we, we had our uh, supporters we had a small platform but now opening this large platform to the youngsters and uh, seeing their brilliant thoughts and ideas coming to shape and also hearing uh, uh, such inspiring story from you dr parik kumar and all uh, the innovators here i'm sure uh, all our 3850 members would uh, really feel happy uh, that such things are happening here one second they'll get inspired with all these things because behind every practitioner there is a innovator inside so only thing there has to be time as you rightly said some luck factor too and uh, maybe some perseverance to put across things in a proper way 
and use these kind of platforms to come up. So I'm sure uh, this will be a useful platform. I'm sure many of our members will go back and see these videos. Those who have missed will are really uh, have missed a lot, but it will be there in the TNOA website. And I'm sure Prasanna will uh, share the link to everybody because I've given him a task to beat his own record uh, in the first edition. So hopefully we'll get to that mark. So thank you all to, uh, for joining us tonight. And uh, special thanks to our uh, chairperson for this today uh, webinar and Dr. Suvan and uh, all the panelists and the speakers who have prepared very well and uh, concisely within that four to five minutes. You all did an excellent job and all the members who joined us for this tonight's uh, session. Thanks a lot. Good night and God bless you. Thank you very much. Good night. Thank you. Thanks to Thank you, mankind. Uh, Ah, yes, sir. Uh, just a yeah. formal uh, formal vote of thanks uh, to follow. Uh, as Nishan sir was pointing out, uh, we also would like to extend our uh, thanks to uh, Mankind Pharma who helped us in marketing promotion and uh, also to Numerotech for their uh, evergreen support as well as uh, to some of our friends who helped, helped us in compiling the session along with Nishan sir and myself. We had Dr. Karthi, Kamar Pujari sir, Nilesh, and also Prithvi Chandrakant who helped me in compiling the session and pick a big shout out to them and all the office bearers of TNOA. Along with them, uh, we'd like to also thank uh, our dynamic president for this wonderful initiative once again and uh, giving a special platform for us to showcase all the your talent. And also another big shout out to the secretary, uh, Sriram sir, who I was disturbing 24-7 uh, for uh, taking this the right way forward. So thank you. Uh, thank you all. Thank you once again uh, for tolerating my constant disturbance. And I think the numbers speak for itself. We already have 47 likes in YouTube. I think this is one of the highest ever in uh, uh, TNOA at uh, such a short notice where uh, we have uh, hit uh, 47 likes. I think uh, as Suvin sir was telling, I think innovation seems to be the buzz that is going around. It has generated a lot of interest. So I think Nirmal sir challenge accepted. And I'll get back to the with the statistics, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. RK, sir, a few words, sir. Yeah. yeah. Th th thank you. Thank you, Nirmal. Thank you, Nisha. And the really, it's a wonderful uh, uh, webinar, you can say. It's, uh, uh, and the last uh, two, three years, not today, and uh, the last webinar on innovation. Really, we learned a lot. It definitely, it's a very good platform also for the youngsters to show their uh, talent. And uh, really, it's very, very, very nice, very nice. And also the Swan and uh, Parikumar, uh, their work, uh, of course, uh, Swan, I have seen his videos and uh, his innovation. And Parikumar, uh, really, sir, we were uh, super, sir. We didn't know about uh, all these uh, things, what you are doing the, all these uh, days. And uh, thank you, thank you very much. The other day I was sitting with him in TNOA in Trichy, and he was telling his uh, other, even uh, other than Aptamaraji also. That's uh, really nice. And uh, I thank you once again all the and also today's topic. All the topics were very, very, very nice, very good. Thank you, thank you again, and uh, wish you all the best. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Suvin, sir. Parikumar, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ravi. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Anish. Thank you, Anish. Pari, sir. Thank you. Atishwar, sir. Thank you, everyone. Thank you all. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Very nice. Very nice. Yes, I can sleep peacefully today. Yeah, yes, sir. Until next month. And he let me sleep peacefully also. Nirmal. Nirmal, go to rest. Good night, Nirmal. Sir, I'm a sir. Sir, I'm sorry. Go to peace, not too much. Go to rest. Good night, Nirmal. Ungolo, ungolo, da wait. Take it, take it. Take it. Very nice. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Here, sir. Needle, we know. Ah, I'm not putting. Amma, need needle cartridge, we know. I'm not putting. I'm not putting. Uh -huh. Thank you, thank you. In the needle, but is it it's available for sale? Uh, that uh, sir, uh, we are still on live only, sir, because uh, once oh, we okay, end okay. it only, the YouTube will go. So oh, I think uh, we'll, okay. yeah, we'll talk. Bye bye. I just wanted to put that there.
thank you thanks prasanna yeah. good night thank you thank you sir thank you so we'll end the meeting sir so that the live also will end so we have yeah yeah it. great great job prasanna yeah we'll connect sir we'll connect for the next yeah. bye bye sir wonderful thanks atishwar sir yes atishwar, wonderful sir, wonderful, wonderful prasanna thank you thank you Mr. sir nishi both doing a great job keep the keep thank the ball going thank you yes thank you yes. thank you ravi sir thank you sir Thank you so much. Thank, thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you, Prasanna. Thank you, Nishan. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. In me. Thanks. Mankind layer. Okay.